Okay, folks, we're back inside the chicken house again today. We talked a little bit about the sprinkler controller, how that controller works, what it does, how it's designed. We're gonna talk a little bit about now about the actual guts of the system inside the chicken house here. I'm gonna let Jonathan show you a clean sprinkler head first to give you an idea of what we've got. And then I'll talk a little bit about how the spacing is and how we use them inside the chicken house. All right, well, this is a, a brand new sprinkler head, never installed. But uh, as you can see, it's got the tube. It hooks in the ceiling. We've got a little weighted area that kind of keeps that, that uh, sprinkler head stable. And it's, it's very similar to what you would see in a agriculture type sprinkling system or, or a sprinkler system in, in a building. Uh, whenever the solenoid valve in the control room triggers to send water out here, it comes through this tube. It goes into this little apparatus here and it starts to spin and, and it gets a good sprinkling pattern inside the house. So the ones inside the house are kind of dirty, but that shows you exactly what they look like out of the box. So this is what they look like inside the chicken house, folks. There's two lines in this house. This is a 42 foot wide house. We can make it work with two lines. There's one over this feed line. There's one over the outside feed line on the other side of the house. These drops are 20 feet apart. So up and down each of these two lines, there's one of these every 20 feet. They are directly across from one another. They are not staggered this way, zag, zag, zigzagging back and forth. They're directly across from one another. So you see this one, there's another one right over there. What they do is throw a 20 foot pattern of sprinkles. So as Jonathan was talking about that little spinner head, that little spinner head can throw a 20 foot circle. So it can basically throw it 10 feet that way. That next one down the line is throwing its sprinkle 10 feet back this way. So we've got good air coverage. The two overlap each other. So the sprinkle on the chicken is fairly uniform throughout the house. It doesn't make any difference where that chicken is in the house. The sprinkler coverage is good. And as Jonathan talked about, the key to making it work is to let it sprinkle let those chickens dry off, and then just about the time they get dry, sprinkle them again. The idea behind that is, I kind of look at it as being similar to if it's the middle of August and it's 100 degrees outside and you go jump in the creek, you get out of the creek, if there's any breeze blowing, you feel pretty good because of that wind chill effect. It's still 100 degrees, but you've been bluffed into thinking that it's a lot less than 100 degrees because that air blowing across your wet skin, that wind chill effect, makes you think it's a lot cooler. We basically bluff these chickens the same way. We sprinkle them with a little bit of water. The fans are pulling air across them, so we've got that wind chill effect. About the time they dry off, we sprinkle them again. We can make that work because the humidity in the house stays low. If we did not let that temperature go to 90 degrees, we could not keep the humidity where we wanted it. The humidity would build up. As temperature drops, humidity goes up. As temperature increases, humidity goes down. And we use this thing in that regard. We let it get to 90 degrees in the house and we do not see mortality. We do not see heat stress on these chickens because they are still reasonably comfortable even at 90 degrees because we've got our federally low humidity, especially compared to a cool cell house where we may have 82 degrees and 90% humidity. So again, it's a different mindset. It works very, very well, but it, it forces you to think differently about how to cool chickens. And it's just one of the other things that we're working on here at Mississippi State to try to figure out, you know, how to help growers grow a better chicken, how to save more money, how to conserve more water and sustain the system because sustainability is a big, de a big deal these days, folks. If you've got any questions, feel free to let us know. We'll try to help you any way we can. Thank you for tuning in and stay safe.